What's going on, sports card hobby family? We are back again. Alf and I have a little bit of a warning, a be careful, a buyer beware out there. We, of course, have 2023-24 Upper Deck Series 2 Hockey Connor Bedard Mania going on. But there's something I saw that I want to share with you, so stay tuned for that. Before I get started, make sure to check out the new Sports Card Dad, the flashy new website. I'll put it in the link in the video description and the pinned comments as well to go and take it per Peruse. There will be some additional content there. And if you are a writer, if you are a blogger, and you would like to add articles to the Sports Card Dad website, I, we are open and listening. And for certain articles, we will look to shout those out and use those as video topics as well. Make sure that you get the shout out as the author on the Sports Card Dad website. Also, you've got nice cards. Make sure they are protected with slab mags, my friends. 10% off at checkout if you use Sports Card Dad code. Like I said, you might have an autograph card. You might have a card where like, hey, look, I don't want the surface fading on me and I want to protect the slab. These suckers are worth the money. Not for every single card in the collection, but maybe you've got five to 10 cards, 20 cards that are pretty big money that you want to protect, definitely check out my links down below for slab mags. You take the card and put it in the sleeve. All right, a site that I use to track what's going on in the new product space as far as sealed wax. There's a lot of people that do collect. They buy and they hold sealed boxes and cases and that sort of thing. Waxstat.com, my buddy Al. Actually, I ran into him when we were out visiting Tom Brady when we went to the Topps Rip Night. And he started a site a while ago, Waxstat.com, that's being used all over the place. But I wanted to share it here as well because it keeps you up to date literally multiple times a day updating the site to kind of show where pricing is for new products. So if you're looking, you're shopping around, you're like, oh, I don't really know kind of what, is this a good price? Waxdat.com, an easy way for you to know if it is a good price or not. And so this is, has been sitting around $300 per box for a hobby box for this series too. And it, I noticed that it ticked up a little bit. There's a lot of craze right now. Everyone is chasing Connor Bedard, the exciting new hockey phenom. One thing though that I did notice on eBay, be very careful out there with potential shell bidding. Of course, shell build, shell, shell building, shell bidding is one of those things very difficult to prove. But when you look at the bid history, there's some things. I was looking at some high dollar bids right now, where there's 40 bids on a card that's at three, four, five thousand dollars for one of these Bedard cards, and there's a zero thrown in there. There's a nine feedback. And look, maybe it literally is somebody that created an eBay account because they're excited about this and they want to get in and buy it. But anytime you've got a hot product like this, you've got a lot of fanfare. There's a lot of excitement. There's also going to be the potential for this sort of thing. And so I think just ask yourself, should I wait a couple weeks on this? Should I wait a month and see where pricing settles? It's kind of that, that FOMO thing is happening right now for sure. And look, I, I don't blame people for this. And honestly, you never know what future pricing is. I mean, the obvious kind of thought is, hey, wait a two or three weeks and maybe the prices will be lower or they should be lower. But nobody knows what pricing will look like on anything in two to three weeks or two months. But I, all I'm going to say is just be careful out there because I'm seeing some kind of some weird bidding patterns for that particular card as well as kind of the uh, maybe the parallels of the card. I saw a numbered one out of 100 and we're talking in the thousands of dollars. We're not talking about a few hundred bucks. We're talking like bids sitting at three, four, five grand for, for one of these cards. So I understand a lot of excitement around the new product, but just be really, really careful with it. We also had a really big, a little bit of a surprising announcement here. Caitlin Clark, and I thought this was really funny because I don't remember if it was on uh, SCI or one of these um, channels that, that's been tracking kind of like which players have returned the most as far as price movements and that sort of thing. And I think that in the back half of 2023 or something, or maybe the end of 2023, it was Caitlin Clark cards that had outperformed everything else. If you had gotten in early on Caitlin Clark cards, of course, the Iowa phenom that is heading to the WNBA, her cards have done very well. She had a huge sale. It was the largest sale for a female basketball player ever, and it was that Bowman First Super Fractor one-of-one one autograph. I think it ended up selling for seventy dollars or $80,000, a huge, huge amount for Caitlin Clark. She's kind of changing the way that people are viewing the WNBA. This is the first time, at least in a long time, that I can remember that the WNBA has a big star that's coming in where there's actually kind of like rookie hype. You know, you've got someone coming in where there's just this massive excitement. And the WNBA, frankly, needs players like this. I said it, I was on the Rolling With FD show going back a few days ago, and we were just talking about the WNBA. And I think that the only way that you can really kind of that boost that entertainment value is having a lot of sharpshooters 
shooters in the league. And that's really kind of where Caitlin Clark, that's her bread and butter. She is a long range three point shooter, a, you know, a Steph Curry type of shooter. And I think that that would be the thing if, 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 you know, girls coming up, if female basketball players, if they can become these long range shooters, that's exciting. Hell, that's what the male NBA is now. It is five guys on the floor, whether you're 6'2 or you're 7'4, Wemby, you can knock down threes. And so for the WNBA, I think that would be a way to kind of really boost the impact and kind of boost attendance and that sort of thing. So I'm hoping that Caitlin Clark kind of brings that excitement. She has signed a multi-year exclusive deal. Panini weaseled their way in there. All you hear about is Fanatic signing these deals. Panini is making moves. And I think people are excited because whether you like Panini or not, the one thing that they do well are their high-end products look great. Now, their high-end products are very popular between National Treasures and Flawless, those two as an example. My hope though is that it's not full of kind of the, you know, not associated with any player game type thing. I think with these types of stuff, with this, with these WNBA cards, it almost needs to be like their NASCAR products. Go to go to Panini NASCAR and it's race used, you know, fire suits. It is like legit stuff. The NASCAR National Treasure stuff is legitimate. So I hope that this is how it goes for them as well, where they've got, you know, game used type memorabilia from Iowa. And then they've got, you know, her WNBA stuff. They really need to do this right to where those products are, are sought after. So I thought that was interesting. A lot of people are like, whoa, how did Fanatics drop the ball on Caitlin Clark? She has more rookie hype around her than a lot of, of the male athletes. So again, a little bit surprising to see that happen, but Panini making a move. And so here we are. Guys, that is what we have today. So a couple of the off sports today. We're not talking about football, baseball, basketball. We've got hockey news and we've got WNBA female basketball news. See how that ends up going. The announcement was that April 1st is when there will be trading cards. Caitlin Clark Panini trading cards. So I know there's going to be a lot of price action on April 1st. It's April Fool's Day, so hopefully Panini is not pulling a prank. But yes, I think there's going to be a lot of excitement around those products. We'll have to see how it plays out. Guys, stay healthy. Stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.